after the first episode you should know a little bit more about some of these redstone circuits but we're still going to try and take you a little bit further by taking you into a deeper dive into redstone 101 some really simple redstone stuff don't you go anywhere Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night and welcome to part 2 of Redstone 101 a simple tutorial to help you with understanding Redstone if you watch part 1 and part 1 should be somewhere on the screen lurking around there's a link definitely somewhere and definitely in the description below but if you've watched part 1 you'll know some of the very basic bits and pieces of Redstone things like torches and what Redstone wires are actually going to do this episode we're going to take it one step further I'm going to introduce you to a few very simple redstone circuits that are the basis of most massive redstone contraptions so what I'm going to teach you today is going to help you build or at least understand some of the really big stuff that you see some of these absolutely amazing youtubers like mumbo jumbo and Seth Bing and people like that making because they are mentally skilled with this stuff but you can be too let's get into the tutorial but before that if you've enjoyed it help me out Stick a little thumb on that and give me a like. And if you've not subscribed to the channel already, I look forward to seeing your name in the sub club. Let's get on with it. First thing we're going to make is probably the most simple circuit, which is a bit of a, a semi-logic gate. And we're going to do this by sticking one block right there. We're going to put a redstone torch on there. We're going to put a lever right there. And just to show that it's going on and off, we're going to stick a redstone lamp. Now you can see that lever is in the on off position, but the redstone lamp is on. If we slip, slip the lever downwards, boom, it turns the redstone lamp off and bang, look, the lamp is not anymore. Switch it up, the lamp is on, switch it off, the lamp is off. Right, so that's brilliant, but this is the wrong way around. We've got to work out how can we can switch that so as when it is off, the lamp is off. And we do that by doing something called a knot gate. We need to make that by the very principle of inverting this signal. And the way we do that is we have to run a redstone current into this block so the block becomes live, which then makes the redstone torch not live. And the best way to do that, I'm not the most efficient way, but I'm gonna stick a block there. I'm gonna get a redstone torch, stick it on there, and we are gonna put a piece of redstone wire right there. You can see that turns that off because that redstone there is powering that piece of wire which powers that block which in turn turns off that torch and then what we can do we can get our redstone lever and we can flick that and that switches it on and we can flick it off and it switches it off on off so that is a not gate the next step up is an or gate which means basically if that lever or that lever or that input or that input are switched on then it works whether there's one of them two of them or 50 gazillion of them and the reason we're going to do this is it gives you a chance of having a switch on either side of a wall perhaps which means that if one or the other is switched off uh, on then you get your light switched on something daft like that dead easy so we're going to get our redstone lamp there we're going to come around this side then we're going to get a lever and we're going to stick a lever there and we're going to stick a lever there now they are both off which means the lamps off but if we switch just that lever on it turns it on if we switch that on it stays on if we switch that off it stays on switch that off it stays off but if we stitch this on it comes on so if either of them are on then it works and as I say if you have multiple um, levers here it works in exactly the same way so if I go one two three four I get the lever there and a lever there again that one that one doesn't matter which one they all turn on the next step up is the AND gate, and as it implies, the AND gate needs two different signals to be on, i.e. that one and that one. So the clue is really in the name. So we want to get a redstone torch there, a redstone torch there, put a redstone thing in the back, so that is now on, you can see that's on. Then we get another redstone torch, and a bit like in the NOT gate, if we then put a redstone torch there, that turns off. You can see the signal has been inverted. It is turned off. So if we then get levers, we stick one there and one there, and we come around the back, and I put a little bit of dust there and a lamp right there. You can see the lamp is off. So we need to turn both of these on for the lamp to turn on. So you can see that, nope, nothing happens. That, nope, nothing happens. But if I switch that one and that one on, something happens. Look, we've got the, the lamp has come on. If I then switch that off, 
it goes off because both of them have got to be switched on for it to work. It's an AND gate. That one and that one have to be on. Dead simple. The last basic logic circuit is called an RS NOR latch. Really, really weird name. I know, but what can I tell you? It's called an RS NOR latch. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself two blocks there. You want to get a redstone torch on that face, a redstone torch on that face, and then we're going to connect these up into kind of a, a circular circuit using this redstone here and here. And we're going to stick a button on top of there and on top of there and just to indicate where the signal is going we're going to stick a bit of redstone out there a bit of redstone out there and a lamp there and a lamp there right so you can see here this lamp is on and this lamp is off by virtue of the fact that we have inverted this signal here and there's no power going to it but if we press this button here it does nothing if we press this button here it switches the power and it stays switched if we press it again doesn't matter how many times we press it we can press it all day it does absolutely nothing but then if we come back over this side and we press it it inverts the signal and we can keep pressing this doesn't matter how many times now we've got to come over here and press that signal like that so this is really useful for lights that you only really want to turn on from perhaps one side of a wall oh there's lots of other uses that you can use for these as well it's a really useful little circuit and um, it's a good way of being able to pull the signal from one side and making sure that you can't reactivate the signal from the same side now you can make this a tiny little bit more simple simply by using a couple of droppers so stick a dropper there and then a dropper facing into the first dropper exactly like that so they're facing into each other there which is dead easy then get a block there and a block there and then a comparator sticking out the back of either one of the droppers really doesn't matter and then you can get a lever or a button sorry on that one there a button on that one there and then stick your block inside the dropper and then when the, the item flows into there, you'll see that it picks up a signal, and when it flows out of there, it stops the signal. So let's just stick a redstone lamp on the back of that. So you can see there, if we press that button, nothing happens. If we press this button, the light comes on. If we press that button again, nothing happens, and nothing happens. And if we press this button, the light goes off. Then we press that one, the light comes on, press it again, nothing happens. So that's a really simple way of doing that kind of circuit. Another very useful circuit is a clock, a redstone clock. And the reason we use a redstone clock is to get a continual pulse over and over again. So we can get a pulse that goes bump, 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 or maybe it can be a slower pulse, and that makes uh, maybe a light flicker on and off and on and off and on and off, or maybe it does something a little bit more complicated. Now, a really simple way of creating a redstone clock is to get two hoppers, and this is called a basic hopper clock. Um, I need to crouch, stick that hopper into that one, delete the first hopper, and then stick that hopper into there. And then if we get a comparator off of one of the hoppers, doesn't matter which one, we stick that whoop, the wrong way around. It's got to come out of the hopper, out like that. And then if we get our lamp there, and we go into this hopper, and we put our block, you can see that that is going flashing on and off and on and off and on and off really dead easy because what's happening is the block is going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards between those two hoppers now if you wanted to you can uh, lock it off by sticking a lever on top of one of the hoppers flicking the lever down and that is going to stop that hopper from releasing the item from it and then flick the lever off again and off goes your clock now this is a fairly limited clock in that you can't change the pulse time it is always the same you can't extend it so you have to look at maybe sticking in a different type of clock so a clock that is extendable or perhaps is more resource friendly will be something like this so we get a block and we stick a torch on the back of that and running into that block we get a repeater exactly like that and then running off of this torch we get another repeater and then we have to you can see that repeater's powered and then we connect those two up like that and you can see that is flashing really really nicely and we can extend it by sticking those onto four ticks you can see it's got even longer between them if we remove these redstones we can actually make it even longer still by sticking repeaters there and there Maybe we stick another repeater there and there, and then connect those up. And before we know it, we've got a clock that is taking ages, and we can stick even more delay, and you can make these delays as long as you want. And look how long that's taking. You can watch the pulse go round and round and round and round, 
and that is really slow when you need a very slow pulse you can make this as long as you want it's a really useful clock so let's make a super fast clock maybe you want a clock that's just got one tick sometimes that's necessary let's stick a block on that and we need to get a comparator and put a comparator output from this block here and then we're going to circle around some redstone there and then back into itself exactly like that now what it's going to do because of the way a comparator works it puts out a signal here and then it compares the signal that's going into it and that signal that's going into it turns it off and on and it does it so fast that it does it as fast as anything in minecraft can which is one tick so if we then put a lever on the top to turn it off and on and we flick that into reduce mode you can see how quickly it goes it's really important you flick this switch here because if you don't flick it it's just going to remain on this is how it's going to compare itself and bang 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 it's a really really fast clock flick that off and it does nothing and flick that on and the clock is rolling at one tick every single time the next circuit is actually hugely useful. It is called a monostable circuit and it is used to create a very fast pulse, often just a one tick pulse on the press of a button. And these are really, really easy to make. So we're gonna put a block there, then we're gonna stick a sticky piston underneath there with a block on top of the sticky piston, a little bit of redstone there, a button on that, and then we just need to get something that's gonna take the output from that particular block there and just to show that it's getting a signal we're going to do that there now what we do is if we hit this button it will create a very sharp and short, short pulse into that light and you'll be able to see that so if i press it you see it's just got a single flash of light very very simple now we can use this monostable circuit here to create something called a t flip-flop and that is going to turn a really short pulse into a sustained always on pulse until you pulse it again and the way we do it is we get our monostable circuit that we've just created and we stick on here a sticky piston and it works on the basis that when faced with a one tick pulse a sticky piston actually throws out its uh, block it doesn't keep it in here we're going to stick a redstone torch here we're going to stick the block that we want to do here whoop, come up here we're going to stick a little bit of redstone and then stick the lamp here just to prove that it's doing what it's we say it's going to do and what happened here is we're going to press this button and that is going to throw out this block and the piston is going to let go of it it's a sticky piston but it's going to let go of it so we'll demonstrate that you can see there that that sticky piston left the block there even though it's a sticky piston it left the block there because it was faced with a single tick pulse or one tick pulse if we then do it again it will go and grab that block and it will turn the light off you can see there so now we can create an on off switch that stays on or off using a button which is quite desirable very often so that is called a t flip flop now we already know that a button gives a short pulse and we already know how to make a really really short pulse using things like uh, t flip-flops and monostable circuits what if we want the pulse to be a lot longer well we can do this using a pulse extender and the way we make the pulse extender is generally using a comparator so we get a comparator running into that block we get a comparator running in that direction and then connect those up with redstone there and there stick a redstone there and there and just a lamp just to prove that it works if we then get ourselves a button and stick that on top now normally the button will only power that lamp for a little bit of time but if we use a pulse extender this is what happens look the button's turned off but the light is still on and then it turns off and you can do it again look the button switches off but the light is still on so that's a really really useful thing and you can make that even longer if you wanted to by using additional comparators like that and that again connect them up one two if we then click that button it will make it even longer as a pulse there it goes it's still on it's still on it's still on it's still on it's staying on and it goes off it's really really long and you can make that as long as you want I mean you could literally add a number of these comparators like that let's just stick another couple on and we'll see what happens like that and click that button and that you can see the pulse was running through and through and because it's comparing the amount of pulse it's got coming in the side versus the amount of pulse it's got going out the back or the front it takes forever 
before it gradually reduces the pulse. It's a great, great system. So what if you haven't got any comparators? Comparators can be relatively expensive to craft. So that's no problem. You can always do it making a repeater. So we can do a pulse extender really simply by getting two blocks and bridging those blocks with a, a repeater that way. Then we want to put our redstone dust there, there and there and then just let's run it off there so as we can see how long the pulse actually lasts really, really clearly. We can stick a button on top of that Click the button, button goes off, but the lamp lasts a little bit longer. Click the button, and the lamp goes off. But and then we can extend it even further if we wanted to by sticking a little bit more in. We can put as many of these as we actually want into it. If we stick that there and put redstone along one, two, three, four. And what's happening? is this button is powering this block which is putting a pulse into this repeater which is powering that block now when it hits that block it's powering that redstone which shoots the current back up but it's extended the pulse by four ticks this is extended it by another four ticks in exactly the same way and this is extended it by another four ticks by powering that four ticks after that which is powered four ticks after that and that's powering that bit of redstone which comes all the way down and powers the lamp so this is going to be an even longer pulse you can see so that's actually 12 ticks long and you could if you wanted to make this longer and longer and longer just by using blocks and comparators it's a really great and pretty cheap way of making a pulse extender and the next one is a really important circuit it's called the block up data switch or the bud switch and it is used to detect any kind of update around the base of the switch so that could include maybe a melon growing or some water flowing or removal or addition of a block anything that causes a block to update so it's really really useful in some food farms especially melon farms cactus farms that kind of thing but it's got lots and lots of uses so first thing you want to do is get yourself a sticky piston on top of the sticky piston put a slime block on top of the slime block put a block of redstone then next to that block of redstone you need an immovable object now this can be any immovable object i'm going to use obsidian just because i can and then you need to have cut some kind of redstone output which i'll use a repeater there and then we can actually just to make sure that we can see exactly what's going on i'm going to put using crouch a lamp there now what happens here if i do put literally anything next to that you will be able to see that lamp will flash on really really quickly so i'm just gonna try and do it so you can see it on the screen you see it flashes on really, really fast. And if I remove it, it flashes on again really fast. Remove it. Any kind of block update and that will be detected. And that's a really good feature of pistons and redstone blocks and can be used to generate a very, very short redstone pulse. So there you have a really good number of little circuits that you can use when you're creating your redstone and they work really, really well. I hope you've understood it. In episode three, which will come later, we are going to create some more complex redstone circuits, things like pistons and pushing opening doors and stuff like that. It's going to be far more interesting, something more functional, and I think you're going to enjoy it a really, really lot. If you've enjoyed this video, please do make sure you hit that like button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club as well if you've not already hit that sub button it'll be awesome to see you on the list and i look forward to seeing you in the next video i don't get it by an arrow see you later bye